signaling here to everybody that um, I want to know who's here and where you're from and chat or chat in the box. Tell me where you are. We're so thrilled. All my ice on the sidewalk is melted. Yay. It's getting warmer here. So we're going to go over quite a bit. Um, we're going to start with today where the full moon is. And I really want to ask if anybody's here. I want, I want to see some things in the chat box. Yeah, okay. Um, are we even connected? Yeah, we're here. Yeah, okay. we're on. So hopefully you've gotten the uh, March astrology cheat sheets that Susan and I have been doing because Alex became our boss and <laughs> she made us. And it really does help. Everybody says they, they, they like using this because if we talk too fast, since we have to get through a lot in an hour, that this already is written and you're just taking side notes. Uh, Christina's here. Hey, Christina, Sylvia, Wendy. Hey, hey, hey. Um, should we wait just a tad? We'll keep chatting until we get more people here. They're just probably signing in. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, I like this month, this March month coming in. I was um, putting, you know, I do a, um, newsletter about the markets and I'm, you know, I'll send it out tomorrow for March. And I was putting together the transits for March. They're actually fairly pleasant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's not a there's... lot of really difficult ones during March. Um, yeah. I like, I like really where Mars is headed. Um, you know, Hey, Jane's here. Pam's here. Denise, Wendy, uh, Mary. Hey, Mary, uh, Leslie from Scotland. Michelle, Mary, Mary. And so, hi, 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 hi. Hi, hey everybody. Thanks for coming. So, all of you Pisces people, happy birthday. Mm -hmm. And so, I think we can begin. Let's get going. Um, so, as we're entering the March, I want to, I have a few little um, uh, first talks. What do you call those? Housekeeping things. Um, I want to talk about the, the April forecast that will be held on March 20th. This looks like in the calendar one week before we normally do that. And that is the truth. I have to be hosting a, uh, my, my future daughter-in-law's, uh, bridal shower that weekend of the 27th. So, uh, we're, we're meeting on March 20th for April. And that's nice, right? Susan, that's the it's the spring equinox, so I mean, what better? It, and um, International Astrology Day is the uh, always on the spring equinox. Yeah, nice. And the spring equinox is always the morning after my birthday. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, but the other thing that I want to talk about is the the I have an offer on the website for the Venus in Pisces talismans. Venus is exalted in. Pisces, uh, you can run to intentionbeads.com and take a look at that. Um, there's three slots or four slots that I have open that um, the intention is to develop a high level of intuition to inspire creativity. So if you wanted to hop on and it's a, something very similar to a personal, uh, but it's priced at a discount and we talk for a half hour, not the full hour. So, and the times are already selected and you get to pick the colors. I've chosen, I don't know, wow, like 15 different canes and you get to pick the six patterns you want for your bracelet. So it's a little bit way more personalized. And then you're involved in the uh, affirmation. Um, you get to pick the, choose the words. We work the words together for your affirmation. So I wanted to say that I'm gonna be doing more and more of that over the year because we have our new crystal, uh, our crystal assistant who is with us. And I think she may be on today right now. Um, so we can, we can get more done, right? With Alex having four hands. Um, and so that, that's cool. Amy's here, uh, Elaine's here, Jody, Julie. So hi everybody. Yeah. So today, full moon, it's already passed. Um, we are basking in the light of the full moon in Virgo. So, um, you know, good day to do Virgo-y things. 
take care of your health, clear the house, clear out junk, um, um, follow my sister's uh, MO of making a list for everything. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, it's really, it's, I, I like this full moon. I've called it shine the light because this, you know, the moon is in at nine degrees of Pisces, or excuse me, the sun is at nine degrees of Pisces. The moon is at nine degrees of Virgo. And that moon is, is trying Uranus. And so there's this like new kind of new uh, energy coming in. It's so yeah, that practical organized, um, that part of your chart, that part of your life that um, this is shining in is to shine the light on something. Mm -hmm. um, and just, this may be the place because of the Virgo. I don't know if anybody's watching Netflix these days or who isn't watching Netflix these days, yeah. but there's a new, there's a brand new Netflix on called Amend, A-M-E-N-D. And it's about this, the constitution, the 14th amendment. And it's with Will Smith, highly, highly recommend it. Um, and so that would be a good thing to start on, you know, to take a look at this at the full moon. So I wanted to plug that somehow, some way. I finished it. It's riveting. And okay. astrologically, um, to have these sorts of issues come up in mass media, like Netflix and on um, programs like this, um, I think, you know, with your astrological hat on, you say, ah, this is part of the Pluto return that is exact next February in 2022. And the first one for the United States, and which says that we are bringing up from the depths um, all sorts of issues that we need to fix in order to move forward as a country. And um, equality is right at the top of the list across the board, in at least in my opinion. And um, so as you're watching it, one, think of it in terms of how cool it is that you see the Pluto return really playing out in terms of what the national discussion is, is about. Um, but then to also recognize that the Constitution um, you know, we formed the country in 1776, and that's what the Pluto return is about. But they didn't write the Constitution until 1789, 13 years later. It was when Pluto was in Aquarius that we got the Constitution. And uh, so even though the Pluto return is about the revolutionary energy that created the country and the issues at the time, um, you know, they didn't get to defining really what we think of as this country in terms of developing the constitution until Pluto was in Aquarius. Yeah, and we've got, we've just coming out of having, you know, six planets in Aquarius um, over this last couple of weeks, which then just pushed a whole, you know, like when you said cold, 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 all across the, the, the really the globe, but specifically for us, the-, yeah. the And, um, I saw something on the weather, I don't know, it was probably last week when we were in the middle of it, um, about Chicago was either within a day, either side, I don't know where it ended up, of the longest string of record cold. Um, and it was in 2009 and I looked it up. It was when Jupiter and Mercury were in Aquarius the last time together. So I'm thinking, okay, well then we're good for another you know, 12 years until Jupiter and, and Mercury get back in Aquarius. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, so you, you can't even avoid that, even if you go to the Southern uh, states. Yeah. Um, so are we ready to start March 1st? Let's go. And, you know, I want to mention, Third. well, but March 1st, I want to talk about Alex's birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Alex's birthday, she turns 33 and she moves into a 10th house, uh, 10th house perfection year. So very interesting. You'll see more of Alex doing her work uh, in her career. But as we do, as we enter March, there are no retrogrades this month. There are four ingresses we'll go over. And the ingress means that a planet moves from one sign into another sign. And typically we have, you know, 
about three a, yeah. a month because the sun always has to move into a new sign in the middle of the month ish. Uh, and a, a Mercury usually, unless he's retrograde, and then Venus usually follows right around that. But this year we're gonna, this month we're gonna get four because Mars ma makes a move. So we're gonna follow that, and so that just also means that when you, when, when we get these ingresses, when planets move from one modality, you know, in one element to the next, it's a change, it's a shift, um, and that usually happens. Well, the sun is always around that. 19 20 21 period um but the others are kind of random mm -hmm. in time so yeah let's start with wednesday march 3rd well you start because it is <laughs> it's my favorite day yeah yeah it's my favorite day <clears throat> this is venus in venus is in her exaltation in pisces in a sextile to uranus and Uranus is in Taurus, which is ruled by uh, ruled by Venus. So this happens at 1109 and it's about stimulating connections. Um, it's my favorite day because there's an excitement is on the menu. It's like, what do you want to do? Uh, it comes in fast and unexpected, yet it plays out for a long time. Um, so yeah, I really like this. I like this day. And for me, that transit is um, Venus's money, Uranus's shock and awe. And so there can be surprise money on uh, March 3rd. And once again, it could be good or bad, uh, you know, when you look at it, but certainly a surprise and cross your fingers that it's a good surprise money. <laughs> so, um, and this is also the day that you mentioned you mentioned the fourth ingress of the month. This is when Mars moves into Gemini. Um, and so Mars is about taking, is being active and um, Gemini is the sign of the twins. So my note on it, on your cheat sheet was to take two Zoom classes on Wednesday, March 3. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, it uh, quick pace. This is a quicker pace. Uh, things get to move again. You know, it goes, Mars goes from, you know, Mars likes to be active. Mars likes to do things. It likes, likes to uh, move and <clears throat> be assertive. And it goes from a, a fixed earth where he feels like he's, you know, wearing clod hoppers or stuck in mud. So he can't move very fast to this air mutable placement, which is like, you know, every, he can think about everything and, and try and multitask and do many things. So it's a very social time again. And it's on my calendar to get back on the Peloton that day. See? Yeah. Okay. Right. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's the Gemini portion is about, you know, the double, the duality. I'm going to be moving both my legs. Excellent. So Wish me luck again, because I haven't been on it for a while. And I was blaming Mars in a slow moving. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think that's perfectly fair. Blame Mars. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day, Thursday, March 4th, we have the Mercury conjoins Jupiter. Now, I like this day too, because what's the final word? This, it, it, se it seems like a message, you know, Mercury is the messenger. And Mercury is met up with that Jupiter first on January 11th. So if you needed to go into your calendar or into your journal and look back on what was, what were you questioning? What was a message that may have come in around January 11th? Then Mercury retrograded, came back and hit, uh, tr uh, trans uh, transited that again, uh, moving backwards on February 14th. But now it's making its final connection to it. So it seems like there's a final word. There's a resolution. There's, a, um, there's an answer to maybe the first question that came in in mid-January. So it's getting the, you know, Mercury is the detail and Jupiter is the big picture. It may be that you ha we have the organized plan of putting everything together for the big picture. So we've got the details, the outline. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Jupiter always expands what it touches. And so when Mercury and Jupiter together, there could be a lot of messages out in the world. 
Um, and in the sign of Aquarius, I think put them online. Um, write, write that short story in Mercury in um, Aquarius and publish it online. And it could be as short as a tweet. Um, you know, short communications, but lots of them. Yeah. And my note is, you know, great ideas become great plans, mm -hmm. right? So whatever you were, mm, now Mercury's still in, in, in shadow here. So it might be that you've, you've got, you've got the orders, you know how to put it together. And I'll remind you of when we get to the, the Mercury's out of shadow meaning all new territory. So it's sometimes nice to have your plan set up before you kind of walk out the front door, you know, where you have everything in order and to start implementing it, uh, which doesn't come up until, until for another about 10 days. Yeah. And now look, we jump nearly a week, six days until the next transit in the sky, um, which is sun conjunct Neptune at 20 Pisces. Um, and so in the mundane world, uh, the sun represents leaders of all kinds. Um, people at the top, and that can be you and your family, it could be you at work, it could be um, people who run cities, states, countries, neighborhoods, whoever. Someone in charge um, is the sun and conjunct Neptune in Neptune's own sign of Pisces. I think you can count on you or them or whoever you're dealing with uh, to have inspired vision to say, okay, this is where we need to go. And it's, it's painting the picture of where we're headed. Um, and so do that in, in any kind of situation where you are the one who is the leader and in control of establishing the vision. Yeah, the, the sun in with Neptune, you know, because it's in Pisces, Neptune's been in Pisces probably for, Oh, nine, yes. nine, 10 years. Um, Misty Mirage, where, you know, you can kind of see the vision. You can, it may have, you know, not real clear boundaries, but you actually see it. So it's kind of like this oasis that you can see ahead of you. And it, it maybe things get, get clearer the closer you get, but permission to cry for, for all kinds of reasons for sad, for happy, for laughter, for just joy. I, I mean, I'm a Pisces, I cry, I cry with just happiness. Um, but, but it's almost like planning ahead to relax on this day. Um, if you're able to, it's a Wednesday, it's hump day, can you take the day off? Find pleasure, because it's a great day for healing, compassion, contemplation, um, a romantic, set up the table with candles and candlelight. It's more of a romantic spiritual nature. So, you know, it's not real deter, real, not real set in its way because it's kind of foggy over here, but that's something where intuition and that's kind of place where I live, mm -hmm. right? The Pisces world, mm -hmm. yeah. The creativity with an asterisk with big, you know, you know, bold quotes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, so. Um, we're going to go to uh, Saturday, the new moon. This is our chart of the month. But before we get to the chart, um, I'm going to let's talk about the new moon. And this is at 23 degrees of Pisces, which happens at 421 p.m. This is always Chicago time. And I titled this carry this reason through. So what we had a couple of days ago with this misty mirage or this healing and compassion and creative carry that purpose through to this because this is a transforming a part we're going to look at this sextile to the pluto um so see what comes up it may be slow and probably not what you were planning but it 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 helps to keep the vision in flow and it's a time to heal mm -hmm. yeah ditto um you know at every new moon uh you look to the sign that the moon is in to set an intention that aligns with that sign, plant the seeds, and then watch them come to fruition two weeks later at the full moon. And so intend to be more compassionate um, on the new moon in March. 
Um, so do you see it down there in the first, it's in the first house and it's at 23 degrees of Pisces and the, the moon has just that second crossed the 23 Pisces three minutes. So this is the, the new moon. Now we'll look also where the Venus, right, coming up right to the Neptune is coming, getting very close a little bit later that day, Venus conjoins Neptune. Now, now carry that loved one in. There's lots of splashing and swirling, maybe a little bit of nakedness. There's a singing underwater, it's laughter, like no cares in the world because the Venus and Neptune are conjoined now going, we don't care about time. We don't care about space. We just care about being. And it just is a really nice place. Um, and it is a Saturday night. So this would be a good time to plan something that's just um, really about an, uh, our, our, an artistic love connection. And, you know, me and Venus, it's money. And so Venus conjunct Neptune in Pisces is about being about and and at the new moon to make those donations to the charitable organizations that you would like to support whose ideals um, you want to support monetarily um, you know there's no better time uh, than to make real change uh, with your donation than Venus conjunct Neptune at the new moon um, and you may find that um, your gift goes further, um, that it makes more difference, or at least you feel it makes more difference. Yeah, that is, that's it. Well, it's very Piscean. We've got those three, four, uh, if you count Pluto or if you count the Neptune. But also, I'm going to just keep this chart up for a second because on Sunday, the 14th, we move into the daylight savings time, right, at 2 a.m. So things get even brighter and lighter earlier. But this is also the day, if you point to the Mercury at 26 in the first house, Mercury is moving out of its shadow. Uh, it started its uh, retrograde or a uh, period around this time when it started going backwards. So now it's coming out of its shadow. So again, new moon energy, uh, all clear ahead, moving forward. And so making a real difference of ceiling, seeing and feeling. And my note on the cheat sheet is to um, review messages, Mercury, uh, since January 16, when it went into its shadow before it uh, went retrograde. And so Mercury has been in its shadow, retrograde, or shadow since Janu from January 16 to March 14, nearly two months. Um, and to, you know, just look back in your calendar and see what was going on. And... Um, see which ones you want to pick up and move forward with as Mercury comes out of its shadow. Yeah, and we'll see even on the next day on Monday the 15th, Mercury here is like almost at 27 degrees, uh, you know, of, of Aquarius where he's been for what, two months? Like for, for a long time, Mercury moves fast, but when he's in his retrograde period moves, moves uh, stays in, in a sign way longer. And then Mercury moves out and into this is, this is one of the, the second ingress of the month. Mercury moves into Pisces. So um, we, can, we can move on from that. Um, so yeah, so Monday the 15th, Mercury into Pisces, lost and alone. Now, I have this in my natal chart, the, the Mercury in Pisces. Um, it's in its detriment. It's in its fall, feeling worn down. Have, being in its downfall, falling on your face, you know, could be be sorrowful, sorrowful and ignored, uh, which equals me, right? But you can see that I'm not like that. Um, that maybe sometimes it's important to to um, to have mitigations in your chart, like I do, that doesn't keep you in this place. But we have to pay attention to the Mercury here in Pisces, because it's really good for musicians, artists, writers poetry, healers, um, and to bring in a, a compassionate space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my note on the cheat sheet was about that there are no words, at least legible ones. And so um, 
don't, you know, don't freak out that you can't come up with quite the right thing to say. It's okay. It's Mercury and Pisces. Um, um, which, which, if you if you you know me, you'll, you when you hear me, even during these hour conversations once a once a month, I'll get caught up on words. I'll say something to mean something else. That's that Mercury in Pisces. I've had it all my life. I I thought when I was younger, I had a Mercury retrograde. I don't. I just have Mercury in Pisces. That's like, you know, uh, one reason if we do readings, if I do readings with you, it's like, I have no idea what time it is. My daughter is like, no, you were over 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh, I was? I didn't really notice that. So uh, she's always trying to keep me on time, just like probably right now. So let's move on. So, but you know, it's good. Mercury, like you say, you've learned how to how to tap into Mercury and Pisces, which is to embrace the creativity that comes, embrace the the just things that pop into your head intuitively. Um, and so it's good for that. Like mm -hmm. you said, musicians, poets, artists, create creators. It's great. Yeah, it's great. You want to take us into the next day? Yeah. Uh, Tuesday, March 16, with the sun sextile Pluto. Sun is at 26 Pisces, Pluto is at 26 Capricorn. And once again, sun, leaders, Pluto, power to transform. So um, leaders with vision, sun and Pisces, uh, can transform business and government, Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto and Capricorn is still in, still there and still here until 2024. So Pluto is not yet done transforming business and government from what it was when it entered Capricorn in 2008. So um, this day you may see movement um, from at this point, you know, the national leadership to take us in a new direction and um, transform into what the Pluto return wants us to address to transform. Yeah, and on a personal level, you can really plug in here. This is a really gay, really good day for supercharging your vitality. You know, it's increased passion for what you want, right? So like literally plug it, plug something into the wall that you can feel like you're coming alive again from the inside. Yeah. Uh, Thursday, the 18th, uh, we have the Venus now, Venus exalted and making that sextile and we're and we're seeing this because the sun and venus are moving really close together so whenever the sun will aspect a planet boom venus uh, is right behind <laughs> venus is right behind and then when we get to the kazimi then venus hits it first and then the sun so we'll we'll chat about that a little bit later on in the month but on thursday the 18th is this rejuvenation uh, make the most of all your relationships um, those are those other people that, you know, you know, those, the intensity and the commitment and the, 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 like, uh, you should know here if you're in tuned with your loved ones or not. Right. And yeah. for me, um, Venus and Pluto are uh, two of the planets that are, uh, you like to see to working together well in times of, um, um, big money opportunities. And so this is no different. Um, it's a, it's a sextile, so it's not going to just happen, but, um, when you know it's there, you can take advantage of the opportunity it presents. And so if you've got any deals, um, financial deals with big companies, this is the day to, um, move those forward and, um, make them work to your advantage. Um, Thursday, March 18th. And then we quickly pass to the Saturday, the 20th, and this is early morning. This is 4.37 a.m. We get the spring equinox and the sun moves into Aries. This is the, the first day of the zodiacal calendar. Um, uh, this is right after my birthday. And, you know, some days I, I remember as a little girl, some days I'm I'm moving snow and some days I'm in my short shorts. And I said that to my daughter a couple of days ago. She goes, short shorts, mom. I'm like, yeah, 
you know, they made big short shorts. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, how do you come out of the ground? Right. Particularly now where we feel like we've been, you know, underneath our ceilings, underneath our roofs, in between walls for this last year, basically. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, how do we come up? Are we are we something new coming out of the ground um, or are we this latent barren tree that just didn't make it through the winter months through this last year? Um, but, you know, uh, there's a regeneration here, you know, all new and fresh. So, you know, I like, of course, I like this day. Yeah. And, you know, and my only note about it was that, you know, it's the afterglow of Sandy's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> and it's true. I'm born on the very last day of the, of the zodiacal year, March 19th, which holds a, a to me, for me, a very uh, mystical, magical placement um, why, why, one reason why I can make talismans where I can take energy that's right available before it dumps out and I can hold it and put it somewhere into, uh, um, uh, I can change an innate object into a tangible talisman. So, um, and for astrologers, yeah. this is new year's day. Um, it's the first day of the astrological gear, zero Aries, uh, the sun at zero Aries. And so um, add it to your calendar in terms of celebrating New Year's um, to, to get into the astrological groove of saying, okay, this is a new beginning. We're starting an entirely new astrological year. Um, for the markets, it's one of the, um, each entry into equinox, into the new season equinox or solstice um, was considered by W.D. Gann, uh, who I think is one of the financial astrology pioneers. Um, he, he traded a hundred years ago, 120 years ago. Um, he looked at all of the change of seasons because of the, of the sun moving into zero degrees of a cardinal sign as a time for potential change of trend uh, in the market. So whatever's going on, the trend might change. But the, the spring equinox is big because it's it's brand new um, it's new year's day yeah so let's uh, move on to the next day the 21st this is when venus moves out of her exaltation where she is really the guest of honor in pisces and she now moves into aries the sign of her detriment where she sharpens her sword it's like she leaves her nest and she reports to duty so this is a place where she's kind of worn down, um, where she has to make her way with no bullshit. She won't stand for anything. Mm -hmm. And my comment about Venus moving into Aries as the party's over, <laughs> you know, like you described, Venus in Pisces is exalted. It's the guest of honor. So here's Venus used to having everything just given given to it for the last however long six weeks no three. like three like three weeks um and then all of a sudden has to go to the house of aries where she's like begging to get something it's a it's an incredible shift in energy to move from exalted to detriment um, and a negative one uh, in yeah. terms of what Venus represents. Yeah, it's like she's reporting to duty. She's got to sharpen her sword. She has to make sure all of her military, and she's not military at all, yeah. right? She doesn't want to fight her way through anything. She wants, she's the receiver, right? Mm -hmm. She receives. But here she has to, to make way for herself. She yeah. realizes very quickly she's not going to get... Um, something brought to her room she has to go out and forage for it but that also gives uh venus a chance to go after what she wants right 
Yeah. So, you know, there's, 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 this could, we're not calling it a, a, all of a negative play, but she sees something she wants and she has the determination to go and get it. So if she has to save her money, if she has to sacrifice for some, for some reason, um, and she has to start like knocking on new doors, like you just said, mm-hmm. and she might have to knock a while, yeah. but she's very forceful here. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, and Actually, there's two other transits that same day, March 21st. The second is Mercury in Pisces, sextile Uranus in Taurus. And so surprising news, but with uh, Mercury in Pisces, watch out that it could be fake news or not. you're not getting all of the details. There's something fuzzy about it. Yeah. And I call this take an air photo. Now I made that up. There's my Mercury and Pisces. But so let me explain what it what I mean. It's like you're going to rem- need to remember this day for some reason. So much is coming in, crashing in maybe like waves, like big white capped waves. But, you know, go into your quiet, find your quiet space, close your eyes in order to picture what is coming in, hold it, snap it, and save it in your kind of Rolodex of memory. So that's what I mean by an air photo, in case you want to use that term. Um, so yeah, it's, it's see what is unseen. So how do you do that, right? Like you said, it's not may not all be true, but it's an, it's a nice picture. Yeah, you may not be able to do much with it, but it's a nice picture. Um, so it is good for artists, right? And and um, maybe some readers or or getting messages. Writers, yeah. Yeah. And the final transit of the day is Mars uh, in Gemini trying Saturn in Aquarius. And Saturn is in its ruling sign in Aquarius. And this is why March 21st is my favorite day in March. Um, <laughs> because um Mars being able to move forward and Saturn in its ruling sign um, and the ruling sign that lets you be more out of the box in terms of what you do and how you set up a structure. Um, Mars trying Uranus, Mars trying Saturn works together really well and you can put that together and move forward with it. Um, so yeah. my favorite day. Yeah. <laughs> Are we still friends? <laughs> is my question for this. Because these two, these two big, these are the malefics. This is Saturn and Mars. And they've been square for a half of a year from like summer of last year all the way through earlier this year has been uh has been in conflict. And you know, these two in a square have really uh tried our nerves. So at this point, I agree with you, Susan. It's a really good chess move. It's a strategic chess move. Uh, it's a good time to negotiate because it's in it's in that sign of uh, Gemini. So it can move the plan forward. Um, I was reminded of kind of that the Hamilton play where, you know, get into the room where it happened right? Like so many things were happening in the room where it happened that pe- people weren't allowed in to share the information, to give some more information, to uh, 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 chat about it, discuss it. And now it's like you have like you have an uh, appointment where you can get into the room where it, where it happens, right? I, I like that, that view of that. Besides, yeah. I love Hamilton. Who doesn't? Exactly. I haven't listened to that track for a while. I'll have to yeah, yep. you got to. All right, let's take it to the Tuesday, the 23rd is my conflict day. Uh, whew, this is the Mars, remember, in Pisces, detriment and fall in a, in a square to the Mars in Gemini, which is, you know, it's kind of in its, um, it's received by uh, you know, Mars is in its the sign of Gemini, which is ruled by Mercury. And so this is slow to correct. Um, you know, it's Mars can't move or think too fast today because the ruler, as I just mentioned, the ruler of Mars is 
Mercury, who's in his fallen detriment. So this day could be confusing and inconsistent chattering. So it's a conflict day to me where things are trying to, I mean, it's a square. So it's like they don't see each other. The movement that Mars wants to do has to check in with Mercury. Mercury's like, I don't know. I forget. I don't remember the plan. Mm -hmm. So this is my conflict day of the month. Yeah. And I'm with you. The, that square between um, Mars doing things and Mercury talking, um, and particularly Mercury and Pisces trying to talk, um, is one, I, I use the word jawboning, which is the, the term for just saying things without really meaning them. You, you just talk and nothing really comes of it. And you're just trying to make a point for the sake of making the point and delaying any progress. Um, and so I know I, this is at 11 degrees, right? Which is sitting right on my daughter's uh, 11, uh, 11 degree sun, right? In Pisces. So this, when you said jawboning and, you know, and we're like, womp, 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 right? Remember you could, Alex, you should probably send or some, everybody can send someone a, one of those jawbone, I think, are they called jawbone? Um, break, jawbreakers, where you're, 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 you're putting a song to people's faces and they're, what is that called? <laughs> Right. And they're singing a song and they're doing some like jib jab, jib jab. That's a good, uh, maybe send somebody one of those just for laughter of like the jaw boning and saying something, but you're really not saying it, but you're doing the, the dance of the Mexican yeah. dance or something. Anyway, but you made me think about that. Yeah. Friday, the 26th. This is the, this is a big day. This is about giving birth. Uh, the sun is Kazemi. Um, is, is pulling in the Venus because here Venus is faster than the sun and this is in the middle of the night and you know it's a setting so I'm going to spend a little bit time here because this is the forward moving Venus in a Kazemi meaning within the heart of the sun so she goes into the heart of the sun about every nine months so it's this giving birth period. Um, she's on her superior, which means the outer petal for anyone that has attended our Venus retrograde cycle. And we talk about the Vivuvian man and that the Venus has a row, the five pointed rose petal um, of one of, the, one of the, the depictions. Well, we do that inner connection is the Kazimi of retrograde. And then when they move on the outer pedal, they do a, a superior when Venus is on the other side of the sun and other side of the earth. Um, so there's this birthing. So what have you birthed since early June, around June 3rd of 2020, uh, when it was at 13 degrees of Gemini, which is interesting because that's right around the Mercury square Mars period that we just talked about on Tuesday. So find that interesting um, in that where Mars is about right now. So um, this is about birth and an insemination. Oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a thing, but not that pleasant. So it's like she's pumping out these love creations every nine months, right? Because her her, her retrograde cycle is every 18 months. So it's this outer rim of the petal. So what have you, what are you bringing to fruition um, from within on the outside? And then you're inseminating something else for another birth in nine months, because she will do another Kazemi in her retrograde cycle at the end of this year. And um, when the sun, when Venus is, when the sun is, sun and Venus are Kazemi, it means that Venus is within 17 minutes of arc, of the 60 minute arc, 17 minutes um, either side of the sun's position in Aries. So it's like being in the eye of the hurricane. It's calm, it's strong, and you can do a lot with it. Um, 
And so Venus, Kazemi, the sun in Aries, takes that warrior princess uh, vibe to an extreme and you can tap into that and really get something done. Um, I use the word here in the cheat sheet of overpowering. Um, and here's Venus, like you had described earlier, Sandy, Venus with the sword, Venus and Aries with the sword trying to slash through and get what she wants. Um, you can do that on Friday, March 26th um, with either in, in Venus arenas of either love or money. Yeah, I have an intent. I, I don't, I may do an intention bracelet that day. And if I do, it will, I will, the intention would be to release, purify, and restore my connection to love, beauty within. So let's get to the next Sunday, the 28th, which is the full moon in Libra. Wow. I, I really like this. Yeah. Direction to love. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean? So let, let's a full moon, right? The moon is in at eight degrees of Aries and it's opposing. No, wait, the, moon is at eight, Libra. the sun is at eight degrees of Aries. There's, there's what I'm talking about. And the moon is opposite that at eight degrees of Libra. But what else is also at eight degrees Libra is Venus, right? We just had two days earlier that Kazimi, the con con connection, the conjunction, and then we got Chiron there. So this is really about how to heal a love connection. Ask yourself, who are these people I say I love? And then ask yourself this, do you? Do you really? Because it's like, take, a, take the cue from that answer and begin doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, who are they that you say you love? And ask, do you really, do you love them? So there's like a healing here. It's a big light because it's a full moon and it's looking at the you and the me and the how we connect our relationship to each other. And the Venus is there, which is really ruled by the Libra. Yeah, Venus rules Libra um, as well as Taurus. So um, for me, Libra is always about um, everyone, kumbaya, you know. <laughs> everybody's happy, everybody's welcome. Um, and let's make, you know, let's widen the circle on a full moon in Libra uh, and have everybody pleasant, happy, loving the whole party. And I hope that happens for your um, party weekend. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's the shower, sure. the bridal shower weekend. Thank you. Uh, Cause it'll be a lot of family and I haven't seen family in a, in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. So direction to love. I like that. Well, thanks for pointing that out. I wasn't recognizing that. Let's get to the Monday. How are we doing on time? <clears throat> We're going to slide right in. Yeah. Um, Monday, the 29th, we have Mercury conjunct Neptune. Now they're both in Pisces, as we know, um, steep in thought. There's no energy here. This is about creating art. This is about, it doesn't mean really sleeping through the day. Um, it doesn't mean taking magical chocolate. I could, later on, but it really is about um, doing, it, not doing something, but yet feeling something because things get blurred here, but writing about the sweetness of doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Like this is just a really nice day. Dolce Fignette means the sweetness of doing nothing. It doesn't mean, I mean, you could take a nap, but you're not going to sleep the whole day. You're going to get out of your pajamas, but you're going to get in your lounge clothes about really enjoying. Maybe you wear some, you know, uh, lingerie lingerie wear I haven't said that word in many years hmm. um, because there's a feeling of sensitivity of really feeling something so nice and relaxing in it where you have to do nothing but enjoy yeah and me being a writer I always see mercury uh, as writing but it can be any kind of communicating that you do um, and 
when it's conjunct Neptune, once again, tap into that, the ideal of Neptune, which is being able to create and envision something uh, that you really want to have happen because it's so perfect for you. And as a writer, I'm going to put on my calendar to write poetry that day, you know, to get Mercury and Neptune working together to help you, um, help me help you get that vision out of the ether and onto a piece of paper that you can share with everybody. That'll be beautiful. And then you can put it to your piano music. There you go. <laughs> or ukulele. I didn't know you play the ukulele. I don't, but oh, okay. the person running the show here does. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I have an accordion. Oh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> That's another whole story because I was taken to accordion lessons when I was like nine. It weighed more than me, I think. I'm sure it did. Uh, Wednesday, the, the 31st. Oh, wait, no, we didn't get to Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday the 30th. Tuesday the 30th. Um, this is Venus, remember, is in Aries. So she has push. She's She's got to try and get her way. But she's sextile, which is an opportunity to initiate a project with Saturn that's very strong. And so gears begin to move. So these planets are saying hello to one another. Uh, Venus may, makes the first move because it's in the sign of a cardinal sign. It's an initiatory. But connections are made and deals are struck. All works well. Yeah, and my note about this is that um, Saturn's discipline can help with money-making efforts, uh, Venus in Aries. Um, so, um, this is the day to, okay, forget yesterday and writing poetry. Today's the day that you tap into, okay, here's what I want to have happen in the money world. And let's put a plan together and um, make that uh, get going. And sell, you know, sell your art from the day before. There you go. Sell your art. Good idea. Excellent idea. I'll buy your poetry. Okay. I, I have, um, I, I write, I, I was into a thing a few years ago, um, challenging myself to write a little poem every day. And so I figured the only way to do that was to make them short. And so I developed this thing I called sukus. And um, ah. they were four lines long. Um, four lines long, four syllables per line, and lines two and four rhymed. And I did that for probably a good year and a half or so, every day. And I wrote about just what happened that day. Um, it was fun to do. Well, will, will you share it with us? Yeah. One that you write on this day, will you share yeah. it with us next week, next month? Okay, good. And uh, what's interesting about Venus sextile Saturn on the 30th, is that here's where we see where Venus has moved ahead of the sun now because the sun follows up now. Venus makes the sextile to Saturn first on the 30th and the sun makes the sextile to Saturn on the 31st, the next day. Previous transits in March, um, the sun went first and then Venus followed up. So now that, that Venus and the sun have been Kazemi, now Venus is moving uh, ahead of the sun and gets gets to these transits first. So on the 31st, uh, the sun is sextile Saturn. And uh, once again, sun leader. Uh, and now, and in Aries, um, really leader, um, big ass leader. Um, sextile the Saturn in Aquarius um, has great ideas and is able to execute them. Uh, and they can be odd ideas. They can be unexpected. They can be Aquarian in terms of their unusualness, their um, appeal to a global community, um, and different than what you might otherwise expect. 
And we have to recall, if we didn't say it, the sun, when sun moves into Aries every year, it goes into its exaltation. So the sun loves to be in Aries. It rules Leo, but the sun is exalted in Pisces or in um, Aries. So this one, the sextile to the Saturn, because they're very strong. They're both very strong planets. So to be known, whatever you are doing, you will be remembered by. So stake your territory, plot your space, be proud. This is expert advice. This is, is uh, I'm sure I'll be making a talisman at this time, uh, depending where the moon is, I have to look at that. But this is really about stepping up and forward and in, 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 in having that ability to know what you're doing is, is righteous. Yeah, and don't be afraid if it's different or, or weird or not what you might be expected to come up with yeah it's okay to be to be different in those plans on this day and i think you could use the word progressive or unique yeah. or uh liberated from um something to help somebody with that kind of of getting out of the unstuckness yeah yep so all right, that come that brings us to the end of the month. And do we ask for again? I just want to, anybody that uh, came in late. We're doing our April is on our April forecast is on the Saturday, March twentieth. It's it's one week earlier than what we normally do. So sign in for that. The cheat sheet will be available uh, prior to that. Thank you all for buying the the cheat sheets because I, we hear that it helps you. Um, it's fun for us to do. We have to come up with like a one liner or a one phrase and uh, we enjoy that. So thank you for yeah. Alex for making, and you also noticed that um, I got an early uh, birthday gift from them and they've allowed me to put in the degrees, right? <laughs> because my first thought was let's put the degrees in and, and it was like, Alex is like, that's too much. And I'm like, mm, okay, we'll do it your way for a little bit and then I'll get my way. And I call it, uh, please give me a birthday gift, a work birthday. So do you have any questions? Hi, Sylvia, you're welcome. Uh, do we have any time? Cynthia's here. Thank you for noticing my goddess gown. This is a, my long gown that you might've seen. I wore this at Colette Baron reeds when I did an event with her. Um, I wore this, it's the only time I've worn that. That's why I wore it today. I'm like, it's so beautiful. All this, this, this embroidery goes all the way down the front, all the way to the ground, my legs. Mm -hmm. um, Wendy likes the cheat sheets. Any questions? Does anybody have any, we have a few minutes to answer. We usually have lots of questions we can't even get to. Um, yeah, the degrees are nice because if you know your own chart or at least have a copy of it, and I think everybody should have a copy on it, I'm going to offer this right now, Alex, that out loud without a practice with Alex, <laughs> That if you don't have your natal chart, can you email Alex at alex at intentionbeads.com and I'll get that uh, uh, a natal chart to you, no cost. But I'm going to just, I'll do this for the next couple. That'll be my birthday gift to you through the month of March. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Any questions? Susan, do you have any other updates on money? What about that we have? Um, well, just one update. I'm watching closely the S&P 500. Um, it made its all-time high on the day before the first of three Saturn square Uranus exact um, on the 17th of February, and the S&P made its all-time high on the 16th. So I'm watching it really carefully um, uh, to see how it plays out the rest of the year. Because I think that the Saturn Uranus square is bearish for the stock market. So. so get into your creative sense and get in really my orbit of the month. You know, I do an orbit of the month each month. And this one is called I express love and affection because of all of that. We're in Pisces season and particularly the, the Venus. And so, you know, if we're going into a bearish, although that's these are your this is your you know, you're about that and I'm about bringing in a, an, a, a, a kind of a tangible 
way that you're using your creative imagination because that you know this this art that we're talking about these things may be where you make your money mm -hmm. right Very well could be and thank you cynthia i purple my color so that's we're at time so thank you for oh, julia, oh. julia had a question about uh pluto and venus something about venus having a great time on the 21st and then being challenged through aries oh because it was um it's moving from where it was exalted in pisces into aries so it's a big uh, downshift in energy so can you say anything about how that the the the, the arc <clears throat> i think she's talking about the kazimi the venus kazimi the sun at the at the outer pedal that's your bailiwick well, but how does it have to do with money? Oh, um, actually, I look at transits mainly to see how it applies. Um, and in the signs um, and Venus's signs, uh, when Venus is exalted, um, it's easier. Money is easier. Venus and Aries, like Sandy uh, painted the picture, you really have to go out and, and go get it, uh, which can be good or bad, but it's just not as easy yeah um, it's more of a fight yeah to the actual yeah. Fight. Um, yeah. Huh. so anyway thank you thank you everyone for being here uh don't forget to look at I'm, I'm doing some venus venus in pisces talisman times uh you get to pick the colors you get to i help you write the affirmation but the intention is to develop a high level of intuition to inspire creativity that right there may be what you need to move throughout the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Love, right. love. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you soon. <laughs>